Uh, today's topic, Depot Repair Analytics for Oracle BI, will be presented by Pavan Nanjundaya from KPI Partners. Pavan is a principal consultant at KPI Partners with over seven years of professional experience working with Oracle eBusiness Suite and the Oracle BI applications. Prior to joining KPI, Pavan worked with Oracle. Currently, he is implementing the Oracle BI applications at Amazon.com. If you want to find out more about KPI Partners or how we can assist your organization with Oracle Business Intelligence, please contact us through our website at kpipartners.com. I will now pass it to Pavan, who is currently in Seattle. Pavan? Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Pavan, and I will be giving you this demo on uh, Depot Repair Analytics by KPI Partners. Let's get started with the presentation first, and here's the agenda for the day. So first we'll see what is Depot Repair, what is Depot Repair Analytics that we're talking about, uh, what are the typical business requirements that any customer who's into the repair business would have. Then we'll get into the demo where I will walk you through the dashboards and reports that we have built for Depot Repair, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Okay? So now let's try to understand what is Depot Repair. Depot Repair is nothing but a module in any ERP system which deals with the complete repair process of a product. To understand this in simple words, let's take a real life example. I use a laptop at home and one day my laptop just doesn't boot up. What do I do? I call up the service center and I try tell them that, look, my laptop's not working. The person on the other line, the service uh, agent, would try to resolve this problem over the phone. If he cannot solve the problem, he would ask me to ship the laptop to their service center where some technician can take a look at this problem. Um, say I send my laptop to the service center, the technician takes a look at my laptop, he tells me that the processor is broken in the laptop because of which it's not working. He'll probably tell me that it, it would cost me $100 to fix this processor and it would take about a week's time to resolve this problem and send it back. If I say yes, go ahead and repair it, he would repair my laptop and send it back to me. So this entire process, which started off with a customer reporting an issue, in this case, myself reporting that my laptop is not working, till the period the company resolves the problem and ships the repair product back to the customer is captured in Depot Repair. The real life example what I just told can be captured in a flow chart as you're seeing on the screen right now. The typical step in a repair process would be issue identification, where the customer has reported the issue, the company looks into the issue and understands, okay, here's what uh, that needs to be done or this is what is broken. So that gets captured in the issue identification part. Once you've identified the issue, what do you do? You would probably go ahead with the repair. Before you get started with the repair, you would give an estimate to the customer saying, hey, it's gonna cost you $100, $200 to repair this uh, product. Do you want me to go ahead with that? And before you even commit on a date, where in my example, the company told me that it would, it would take about a week's time to repair my laptop, the company would check uh, on the resources available for that week. If they have a full strength of staff, he can promise a customer a particular date, saying this will be repaired within a week's time. So once the company has done this level of assessment of estimates and resources, they would actually perform the repair process. The last step would be the repair resolution. So at the time of repair resolution, the product is already repaired. You would want to send the product back to the customer and invoice the customer and collect the money for the repair that is performed. So as you can see, the laptop which came as a defective product leaves uh, the organization as a happy laptop at the end of the process. Now, the next question is, what is Oracle uh, Business Intelligence Applications or, or OBIA? OBIA is a pre-built best practice analytics provided by Oracle, which supports different functional areas for a company. Now, why would a customer uh, really buy this product? This product helps customers to improve the business by increasing the efficiency of their operations. Customers who buy OBIA can manage their finance, human resource, procurement, and supply chain processes. So all in all, this is a very good product that Oracle provides whereby customers can manage their complete end-to-end -end business. Now, 
there are few glitches here. Glitches in the sense OBIA does not cover all the functionalities of a customer's business. For example, in the case of a customer who's into repair business or who's using a product called a product like Depot Repair, the OBIA solution given by Oracle does not provide any analytical solution. So that is where KPI partners come into picture or the product developed by KPI partners that is the Depot Repair Analytics comes into picture. So the next question is what is Depot Repair Analytics? We have built an analytical solution for Depot Repair which is completely in sync with Oracle's best practices and customers can use this to maximize the profitability and increase the efficiency of their repair business. That is, this is exactly plugging the gap where customer has bought an OBIE product, OBIA product, but the product does not cater to all the functionalities in the customer's business. We will get into uh, further details of the D4 repair analytics in the further slides and the demo when I actually uh, walk you through the reports and dashboards that we have built. So the Depot Repair Analytics that we have built is a pre-built solution which has the following. Our solution drives the profitability by better analysis of profit margins. So anybody who is running a Depot uh, a Repair organization would primarily want to understand is this company really making money? How much profit did I make period to period? Is the company really making any money at all? So those basic questions can be answered. Along with that, it also increases the efficiency by reducing the repair backlog. Now, any customer who is into supply chain or even a repair or servicing industry would agree with me when I say backlog is one of the biggest problems in the company. Right? For some reason, I am not able to meet my targets because of which orders are getting backlogged. How do you solve this problem? What, what, what does it take for the company to improve the process overall? Yes the analytical solution gives an answer to all these questions. It provides a comprehensive view to the technicians and depot repair managers. So it's not just the top management who would want to use an uh, BI product, but it's also the depot repair managers and in fact the people who work on the shop floor, even they could use this product to monitor their day-to-day -day activities or to monitor the repair orders being processed. The product not only comes with pre-built reports and dashboards, it also gives a capability to build the ad hoc reports. Most of the time, business users will have a requirement where the existing report may not solve the problem. So they would want to go ahead and build their own reports. So that is where this ad hoc capability comes into picture. The product integrates well with the manufacturing and supply chain modules. So if a customer has already implemented manufacturing and supply chain modules uh, in their ERP system, the depot repair analytics, what we are providing, fits very well with that and seamlessly integrates with the existing business process. Um, so what are the typical business requirements? Typical business requirements are, or questions are a set of points that anybody in the repair industry would like to understand or these are questions that anybody will have. And the typical questions would be, what is the profit margin in my repair organization? How can I improve the efficiency of my repair process? Now, I know that my repair process is streamlined, but with the existing repair process, either I'm not able to make profits or I'm not able to meet my backlog, which means there is some problem somewhere in the entire process which needs to be fixed so that you can improve the overall efficiency of the repair process. How are the resources utilized? A very good question because I want to understand are my resources overutilized, underutilized? Should I really uh, get more people or probably more qualified and equipped uh, people? What is the variance between repair estimates and repair actual? Now, this is a very important metric in a repair organization because let me go back to my uh, initial example of laptop scenario to, exa to explain this situation. So when I uh, sent my broken laptop to the service center, the technician told me that it will cost me $100 and it would probably take about a week's time. When I, okay, when the technician told me that, I, I just thought or mentally calculated that, okay, I'll have to leave without my laptop for a week's time. And once my laptop comes back, I can start using that. Now imagine if the technician calls me after five days and says, hey, I'm sorry, it's going to cost you instead of $100, it's going to cost you $200 and it will take me two more weeks to ship you the product back. Now that does not uh, leave uh, me as a happy customer because I have already planned my tasks 
hoping that my laptop would come back. So this definitely affects the customer relationship. So the goal here is any repair organization would like to keep the difference between the estimates and actuals to very minimum or in fact it should be zero which means when I say or when I estimate that it will cost X amount of dollars to fix the product, I should be very close to that X amount of dollars. Otherwise, it will lead uh, to a bad customer relationship. We'll get into uh, the dashboards and reports where I will show each report and dashboard how these requirements can be answered by individual reports and dashboards. Uh, supported platforms. Uh, the Depot Repair Analytics works perfectly fine with Oracle eBusiness Suite 11i and Release 12, which means if a customer is using um, 11i or R12 versions of eBusiness Suite, the product seamlessly integrates with the existing ERP system. Uh, in terms of BI apps, it works fine with the 7960 through 7963 versions of the applications on Windows, Linux, and Unix platform. It also works perfectly fine for OBI 101341 through 11G. Along with this, the part, we also have a solution for the iPad and iPhones. So if somebody would like to uh, use the product on their smartphones or on the iPads, we have a version that is compatible to that too. You could go to kpipartners.com slash mobile BI demo to take a look at this uh, information. Okay, now let's get started with the demo. Okay, uh, so as I was saying, we have in the demo, we have different dashboard pages. Each page has got a bunch of reports under that, and the reports are there on that page for a specific region. For example, the first page is called the overview page, where we have all the summary level reports are uh, the report which will give you the actual health of a repair organization in one shot. So that kind of reports are passed in the overview dashboard page. So before I start with the demo of the dashboards, uh, I would like to say that this is a demo data, which means the actual numbers may not make sense because it's a markup data for a demo purpose. What we need to understand is the functionality provided by this report and how much sense does it make to business and is it really answering the business requirements. So on the top uh, is what is called as the dashboard prompts, where these are different dimensions by which I can analyze my repair data. For example, I have chosen uh, 2011 as my year and Q1, that is first quarter as my time period for which I want to analyze my repair data. On the same line, if I want to say analyze my repair information for a particular product, let's say my company is into the repair business of electronics and computers, and I want to understand which particular model of laptop was returned the most in quarter one of 2011. If that is the case, I would choose the particular model of laptop from the product so that the information is just specific to that particular laptop model. Below that is what we call the key metrics. These metrics give the actual health check of my repair organization. For example, what you see in the top left is the basic repair related metrics. That is, number of repairs is 1838. That means my company in quarter one processed about 1838 repairs of which I have generated a revenue of 110,000 odd dollars. Now the total actual margin, that is the total percentage of profit that I've generated is a negative 19.95. So if um, say a top guy in the company is looking at this report, in one shot he can understand that the company is not making money and the profits are down in quarter one. So, this, this, so these are the key metrics which gives me information at a summary level. The next set of key metrics are the revenue amount of $110,000 can be broken down by item labor or expense. So that is exactly what you're seeing there. So what this tells me is if I am buying my items, that is customer sends his laptop, I'm supposed to repair the laptop, but in the process of repairing, I need to procure some items from my vendors. So when I'm actually procuring my items from my vendors, how much revenue did I make on procuring the item? is what gets captured in the item revenue. Similarly, labor revenue is the revenue that are generated on the labor, and expense revenue would be the expense on the miscellaneous activities in the process of repairing it. Towards the extreme right is the summary level repair efficiency metrics. This tells me on-time repair completion ratio is 100%. 
Now, this is more like an ideal situation where any company would want to be at. So in my previous example, when uh, the service center told me that my laptop will be repaired within a week's time for a cost of $100, and if they were really able to do that of repairing it within a week's time, then that gets qualified as an on-time completion ratio. If the laptop was not repaired on time and if it got pushed by a couple of weeks, then that gets qualified as a backlog order. So the next metric of 57 repair backlog is my organization had about 57 backlog orders in quarter one. And mean time to complete a repair order is about 13.42 days. That is, I'm taking on an average 13.42 days to complete my repair order. So just by looking at these set of key metrics, I can very well understand what is happening in my repair organization even before I get into the details of each report. Uh, below that is what we have the uh, individual uh, reports to analyze a specific set of key metrics. The first one on the left is called the profit margin trending. Now, the, the uh, manager uh, of the repair organization would like to understand how much profit am I making and how much is it quarter to quarter or month to month or week to week. So if you look at the report, we are saying that in quarter one of 2011, we have made profits of $16,397, and that is about 40% uh, in profit. That seems like a good number, but I want to get into further details where I want to understand this data at a monthly level. On a monthly uh, level, you will see that in February, my profit was about 12670 but in March, my profit went down to 3727 so clearly looking at this, I get a picture that, okay, March did not do as well as February. So let's get into further detail and understand this data at a weekly level. So this gives me even a better picture where it tells me in the first week of March, I made 2,424 profit, but my profit started decreasing towards the end of March. So just by looking at the first report, I can understand that the profit margin for some reason decreased in the month of March because of which the overall quarter has taken a hit. If you look at the next report, which is the mean time trending, that is the average time that my company is taking to repair an order, in the quarter one, my company took about 13.42 days to repair an order, to repair a particular product. The monthly breakdown of that tells me that in February, my company took eight days but in March, it has taken 16 days. So clearly the numbers have doubled. If you try to relate this report to the previous report, we saw that in the previous report, the profit started decreasing in March, and this report tells me that the time taken to repair the order started increasing in the month of March. So clearly the message that I'm getting from these two reports is something's going wrong in my company or something went wrong in the month of March because of which overall it's impacting all the business processes. The third report is the backlog trending. Backlog trending tells me that there are about 909 orders sitting in my backlog for quarter one. Again, let's get into some details of that. So the message is uh, pretty similar. The backlog orders were about 291 in the month of February, but it has just uh, gone up to 616 in the month of March. So even before I get into any of the other details, from the first three reports, I can very well understand that my company is okay, making some profits, but definitely the process is going wrong somewhere. It went wrong in the month of March because of which the profits went down, the mean time to repair the orders went up, and the backlogs went up in the month of March. The fourth report is the estimate accuracy trending. As we were uh, talking earlier about the estimates, this is a crucial metric because anybody would like to keep the estimate and the actual very close together. So uh, let's take a scenario where, uh, in fact, in my previous scenario, I was told that my laptop will be fixed for $100. But ultimately, if the company sends me an invoice for $110, that means their estimates and actuals were off by $10. Now, that is what is captured in this fourth report here. So we are showing the delta that is the difference between the estimates to actuals for a given quarter in my organization. So we are saying that the estimates to actuals were off by $110. This is nothing but the summation of all the estimates for a given quarter. 
This doesn't give me a whole lot of information, so let me take you to the detailed report where I can see by repair order, where did the estimates go wrong. So here we are getting into the details of each repair order. Uh, let's take one repair order uh, to understand this better. So let's take a repair order 10059. What we are showing is all the relevant information for a repair order, that is this repair order was tied to the service request number 100. It got created on a particular date. We promise that it will be delivered by 15th of March. Currently, the order is closed. It belonged to a particular inventory arc. It was for a customer, Jackie William. Now, here are my estimate numbers. My company told the customer that it will take $85.2 to fix your problem. But finally, we ended up billing the customer for 86.3, which means my estimates were off by a negative 1.2 and it translates to about 1.4% off. So when I look at the information broken down at repair order level, I can clearly understand, okay, for these repair orders, I did not do a good job in estimating. The next action steps would be probably work with the technician who gave an estimate or work with the managers to understand where did my estimates and actuals not meet, what needs to be done to rectify these things. So that is about the overview page. Let's get into the profitability and frequency. So uh, in the business requirements in my presentation earlier, I was talking about requirements like what is the profit margin, how to improve the efficiency of my uh, repair organization. Now, those are the questions that will be answered in these dashboard pages. So if you look at the first report, we are trying to show the profit margin by item contract or depot. So as an owner of a repair organization, I would like to understand which are those products which are getting me my maximum revenue or which are those products because of which I am incurring losses. That is, a product is getting returned over and over again for some reason, then because of that, instead of making money, I'm actually losing money. So if that is the requirement, then here's uh, the report which exactly answers that question. So. So we can analyze the profit margin information based on any of these. I can look at it by products, by agreement, by inventory arc. Uh, we look at the information by a product. Like I was saying, my company is into computers and electronics, so I repair a certain type of desktop. And this model of desktop, what we call XS801, in the process of repairing that, I had uh, to incur a cost of 6595 but the total revenue that I made on that was 19,000, which means I have made a profit of about 12,000 and it translates to 65% profit. This is great information for anybody who wants to analyze the profit margins or the revenues for a particular period. On the contrary, I can also have a product which has got a cost and the revenue that is generated on the cost is less, which means I'm incurring a loss. So the message that uh, the business users or the managers would get is we either need to fix the production of uh, the problems with related to the production of the uh, item itself or probably come up with better solutions to increase the revenue on that product. The same profit margin can also be analyzed by billing type. Billing type is nothing but the different cost types of the revenue types in my organization. It can be broken down by labor, expense, and material. So this report tells me on labor, I have spent 26,000, but I've made a profit of 57,000, which means I'm doing okay on labor, but on material, I, what I have spent is definitely not equal to or greater than what I have recovered. That means I should either negotiate better terms with my vendors or find other vendors who can get me the product at a better cost. Let's move on to frequency. In frequency, I want to understand which is that one product which is getting returned the maximum. Now, there are two ways of looking at this. A, either this product is coming back over and over again because of which I am spending a lot of money in repairing that, so I need to fix the problem, or there is some product which is coming back, but in the process of repairing that, I'm actually making a lot of money. So either way, it's good to have both sides of the information. So the repair volume by item, depot, or customer can be analyzed by product, customer, or inventory arc. Let's take a look at a particular product called um, 
E5400 is a particular model of laptop that my company is into. I've processed about 950 repair orders in quarter one for this product alone. It has generated a revenue of about 21,000. So looking at this, I can understand that, okay, this product is coming back um, a lot of times, but in the process, I'm actually making some revenue out of it. So that is good news for my company. Now, the first report told me that this product is getting returned a lot of times. The second report tells me why is it getting returned a lot of times. Now, this information is very important because I can make meaningful analysis in terms of if it is getting returned, as you can see on the screen, the repair reason is damaged product and that is taking a chunk of my repair orders. Out of the entire 2,906 repair orders, 2,888 were, were returned because the product was damaged. As a user or a manager, what I would try to understand from this report is if all the products are getting damaged, are they getting damaged during shipping? Are they getting damaged during packing? What is going wrong that these products are getting damaged? So clearly, if I fix that problem in my company, I could probably reduce the number of returns to a great extent. So thereby, it will definitely increase the efficiency of my repair process, you know, which was one of the typical requirements that we saw in the slides earlier. We were talking about the estimate accuracy. So we have a few reports on this page, which takes us into further details of estimates to actual analysis. We can analyze this information by customer, by inventory, or, or by agreement. We can look at some agreement-related information. Agreement is nothing but, um, so if you buy a laptop, the product company can tell you that, okay, along with the product, I can give you an extended warranty, or I can give you a lifetime support. So for demo purposes, we've just kept these two as sample agreement types. Say if I've sold 100 products, which were tied to extended warranty as an agreement, then the total estimate on that was about 59,000 and the total actual was about 116,000, which means by agreement, my estimates were off by 95%, which is definitely not good. Then uh, let's move to the next report where it tells me the repair discount by depot or customer. So let's say I have 10 customers with whom I'm doing great business, but to increase my uh, business with these customers, I probably have to give them more discounts or if I'm already giving them discounts, how much uh, am I giving? Am I giving them good discounts? So this report helps me understand how many repair orders were processed, how much was the revenue generated and how much discount did I give for these customers? Another way of analyzing uh, my business to understand, okay, is this really helping me in increasing the revenue for the company? The fourth report is the timeline. Uh, in the uh, presentation, we were talking about a requirement where I want to understand, am I utilizing my resources well? Is there anything that I can do to increase the efficiency of the resources? This is the place, or this is the dashboard page which gives me answers to those questions. So repair order backlog by depot status or technician, that is, I want to analyze by repair status, that is, hold or open or closed, how many repair orders do I have in my company right now? What is the repair amount that I've generated? So this tells me that there are about 493 open orders and the repair amount tied to that is about 17,611. The next two reports give me clear uh, information about the technicians who are working on the repair orders and what is their efficiency. So the report is called repair order late completion by default technician. So by resource, it tells me how many orders were processed, how many were closed late, and what percentage were closed late. Let's take an example of an employee who uh, called Derek White. So Derek processed about 1,418 repair orders in quarter one, of which 843 were closed late, which means 59% of his overall orders were closed late. When a manager looks at this report, he understands that the efficiency of Derek is probably not good because over 50% of his orders are getting closed late. Now, the next action item from this report would be to work with the employee or the resource and understand what is going wrong. Either he's overloaded uh, with work or maybe he needs to improve his skill set or whatever that needs to be done to improve the efficiency. The last report on this page gives me mean time to repair by default technician. 
A resource is taking on an average 18 days to fix a repair order and on an average is generating a repair revenue of about $25. Uh, so I was talking about Anthem Quam as an example. So if a resource is taking about 18 days to fix an order on an average and if say if my SLA is about a week's time, that means clearly the resource is taking close to three times the expected number of uh, days. So a manager can make meaningful analysis from this and understand A, my resources are doing well or I need to hire more people or I need to you know, probably integrate with other teams to improve the efficiency of my resources. The last uh, report or the last dashboard page is the details page. Now, a common requirement among business users would be that I do not need a, a chart or a bar graph. All I need is some data that can be exported to Excel where I can create my own pivots or I can play around with the information. If that is the requirement, this report exactly meets that requirement. What we're showing here is we are showing the most detail level information of the repair organization. That is, we are showing information at a repair order level and in a format that is easily exportable to Excel. We can analyze this information based on any of the above prompts on top. That is, for 2011, for a particular quarter, I want to analyze all the repair orders that were generated for a particular model of my desktop, which I call XS801. So what I see on the screen is the attribute level information of uh, the repair order. So if you look at the information, we show the service request number, the repair, the creation date, the close date of the repair order, who was the resource who worked on that, what were the amounts tied to this particular repair order. So this gives me, this is very similar to a OLTP or a transaction level report where if I want to analyze data at individual transaction level, here's where I come and start playing around with the information. So this is uh, basically, uh, these are the different dashboard pages that we have built, keeping in mind specific business requirements and how each dashboard page answers those specific requirements that we were talking about initially. Let's uh, get back to the presentation. So uh, let me put in presentation mode. Okay. So now that we're done with the demo, uh, the download info sheet, this is the sheet which has all the basic information about the product. And if you would like to get more information on that, you can always contact our marketing department. But the free download is available uh, in the below link. So you could just go there, download this, and um, understand uh, what we are talking about and how to get more information on the depot repair um, product. Uh, I think we are done with the demo. We can open it up for Q&A and uh, Jeremiah. Our first question is, uh, we are already using uh, the Oracle BI applications for financials and order management. Uh, if we implement KPIs Depot Repair and Oracle uh, comes up with a new version of the Oracle BI applications, how do you handle the upgrade? Okay, uh, good question. So when we were building the product, we ensured that the product is in sync with the best practices recommended by Oracle for extensions. That means if a company is already using BI Apps product, by integrating our product, uh, even if Oracle comes up with a newer version of BI Apps, the pro our depot repair should be easily upgradable because it's already built with the best practices. So that is not a problem and it should work seamlessly with upgraded versions of BI Apps also. Okay, next question. Uh, my company is not using Oracle eBusiness Suite, but we have a huge repair organization. Does KPI's Depot Repair Analytics work with non-Oracle eBusiness Suite source systems? Okay. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. The uh, repair, Depot Repair Analytics, what we have built, is built keeping in mind the BI Apps platform, but at the same time, we have a universal adapter. Universal adapter is independent of any source system. So if the customer is using uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite or SAP or any other ERP system, the universal adapter should be able to integrate with their source system and uh, work perfectly fine. So yes, it should work fine with any source system, not only EBS. Great. Uh, I think this question uh, refers back to the uh, 
the overview tab. Um, is this an aggregate of all repairs associated with multiple service centers? That is correct. So it depends how the entire repair process is really implemented in the customer source system. So if the repair process is integrated in such a way that it handles the entire repair of the CRM or the manufacturing process, this product is capable of handling all the repairs that are tied to the customer's repair organization. So if it's a repair that is tied to say a whip or a bomb for a customer who's into manufacturing or a customer who's mostly on the CRM side where they're handling service requests, this product should be able to handle in uh, either cases. That is, it should work fine for any repair in a customer's company. Okay, and I think this is a follow-up question. Um, does uh, Depot Repair Analytics enable drill down within each service center? It definitely does. So what we saw was uh, when I drilled down from a summary level report uh, onto a detail, it took me to a detailed report where I was showing the information at a repair order level. At the same time, I can drill down to the inventory R which processes this or the service center. So when I go to that service center, I can look at all the report related information for that particular service center. So yes, it should be able to drill down to a particular service center or an inventory R. For profit margin, can the information be drilled down by technician? For profit margin, of course you can. In fact, uh, you can drill down by technician. The better way to analyze that information would be to use the prompts on top. So when uh, the global prompts are the prompts that I was talking about on the top page, in fact, to answer that question, let me just go back to the dashboard page so that we know what I'm talking about. Right, so what you see on top are the prompts that I'm talking about. So for example, if we are talking about profitability, the ideal way to look at this information would be to choose a value from the prompt values on top. Since this is a demo uh, instance, we have not enabled all the prompts that are supported in the product. Just like a product prompt, I can have a resource prompt, which means I select a particular resource, which can be a particular, say, machinery or a particular individual. For that individual, I can see all the information. If you want to do a drill down, I start with a summary report where it tells me that, okay, here's the overall profit that you've generated. And we can always include a resource as one of the columns so that you can click on that and it will show you for this individual, your company has generated X amount of revenue or made X amount of uh, profit. So yes, that uh, is possible. Okay, uh, since the, this Depot Repair Analytics solution is uh, built upon best practices with the 796 version of the Oracle BI, applica Oracle BI applications, uh, is the assumption correct that uh, it is supported on all databases uh, that the Oracle BI apps are certified on, i.e. Oracle, Teradata, DB2, and SQL Server? Absolutely. So that, that was the universal adapter that I was talking about. So it can plug into any database or any source system and import the data from that. So it works fine with any database like a SQL Server or Oracle DB uh, and with any source system. So it is source independent. Uh, what other Oracle eBusiness Suite modules uh, might integrate with Depot Repair Analytics? Okay, uh, so there are a bunch of modules which would integrate. For example, in the reports that I was showing, I, when I went into the repair level information, you would have seen that I was showing the service request uh, level information. So the CRM modules uh, like service request or service analytics or knowledge management would definitely integrate with uh, the depot repair module. Now, if the customer is into manufacturing space, their whip and bomb modules would integrate because Let's take a scenario, or let's go back to my scenario of the laptop getting fixed. So if my laptop uh, needs to be fixed and if it gets created as a discrete job, I mean, I'm getting a little uh, into the technical details because if anybody on the call is from a manufacturing background, they would be able to appreciate this better. So if the company needs to create a discrete job to process this repair order, 
then the whole VIP, bomb, all the shop floor, those modules would get plugged into depot repair. So finally, if the order is a uh, repair order is fulfilled and if I have to ship it back to my customer, I would probably uh, engage my order management. So there are a bunch of modules that will work uh, and integrate with depot repair. Uh, and we've ensured that if the customer is, say, using only the manufacturing part of the BI or only supply chain part of the BI, this product should still plug and play easily with the existing infrastructure. Okay, great. In addition to what uh, Pavan has mentioned regarding what it integrates with, uh, it also integrates with the supply chain and order management modules uh, to trace back what was the original order the customer had uh, ordered for that particular product. Great. Thank you, Vikas. That was uh, Vikas Agrawal, one of our practice directors, chiming in there. Uh, so, uh, Pavan, do you have anything else to add before we conclude the uh, webinar here? Uh, no, Jeremy, I think I'm done. Uh, yep. Okay, great. If there are uh, any other questions, we can take it. Otherwise, we're done. Sounds good. You can always reach out to us at kpipartners.com if you have any other questions. Uh, that concludes the Q&A portion of the event. Uh, as mentioned earlier, if you want to find out more about KPI Partners or how we can assist your organization with Oracle Business Intelligence or Oracle EPM, please follow us on Twitter at KPI Partners or contact us through our website at kpipartners.com. Thank you to everyone for joining us on today's webinar and thank you to Pavan for presenting. Have a good day, everybody.